because of Hurrell's lack of WDF action this year, Andrew, he probably is one of the more beatable top seeds, you could say. Well, potentially, yes. And I think also, if you look back to, to James's performance here last year, of course, got to the quarterfinals and you know, really impressed as the tournament went on. But in his first game, which was his first game back here in five years, it was a really sluggish performance against the Belgian killer B, John Desremo. You know, a low 70s average, James, you know, I remember talking to him at the time and he said, you know, I was shaking like a leaf. I don't know what it was. The nerves are playing on that historic lakeside stage. So, you know, if, if those nerves 60. affect him, then certainly Dennis has got a chance. And, you know, the way Dennis played on Saturday, the nature of that game, I don't think that's a true reflection on what the former professional strongman is really capable of. Yeah, I'd love to see what he is capable of in strong manning still, but we'll just have to stick to his darts for now. Yeah, he's got a very strong handshake, I'll tell you that. If you've never met Dennis Nielsen, he'll give you the most bone-crushing handshake you've ever had, but he's still a wonderful man, and he'll probably give you a hug afterwards. So, yes, uh, fantastic. And one of three Swedish men in this year's tournament. His compatriot, Ricky Nauman, went out a little bit earlier today against Gary Stone. And, you know, Edwin Torbjornsson, the way he started, he's got a very good chance of causing a real upset later in the week when he plays the returning 2006 world champion, Jella Klaassen. He certainly does. And Dennis Nilsson is hoping to be the causer of upsets this evening. James Horrell has been a tournament winner recently. He won his very first challenge tour when beating the now tour card holder Owen Bates 5-2. That came at the end of October. It's Dennis, who's looking to win leg one. Climbing the 20s ladder. 100. And he just about misses the summit, but James Hurrell is not on a finish. Double five. No, he goes to split. Twelve. Doesn't pay off and could well be punished here. The potential two data here for the hillbilly. Mm, he's gone cautious. Ensuring that he does get one dart at a bolt. As long as he finds the 19 bed, which he does. Wasn't there, I think we were all left a bit puzzled then, but missed it entirely. That's five missed. <laughs> Six time of asking and just gives those muscles a bit of a flex because, you know, he's, he's not done it for five minutes. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's normally a very quiet, unassuming player, Dennis Nielsen, but we're seeing a lot more of the uh, the inner Dennis coming out, you know, the game against Jordan and, and hearing, you know what, good for him. Celebrating being back at Lakeside for the first time in a, a number of years. Been playing some good stuff this year, played some good stuff for Sweden at the World Cup earlier this year, alongside, you know, the aforementioned Torp Jonsson. Um, but I, I did want to give a mention before we get too far into this game, and how it pans out. The sticker on James's, uh, the right side of James's chest, uh, you know, 1954, 2023, that is a tribute Sixth. to a chap called Ron Grant, who was heavily involved with darts in Gloucestershire. James is, of course, the England captain within the WDF system, but, you know, he's Gloucestershire born and bred. Uh, he's played a, a lot of Sixth. games for Gloucestershire at county level, and Ron was pretty much a, a mentor for him. Uh, for a number of years, a really key figure in James's darting development, and he passed away uh, quite suddenly earlier this year. Uh, so I know James dedicated his challenge to a win to, to Ron when he picked that up soon after the World Cup, and yeah, paying tribute to, to someone who I know meant a lot to him as well. With that sticker on his shirt in this game. 
Well, that might give him a bit of extra motivation. Bit of a sluggish start from both players, you could say. 59. No, we've played about a leg and a half. Already there is a feeling that it could be a long game. 142. 126. Yeah, well, I haven't said it yet, but I did think on paper this had the potential to go all the way. I was. Right with Copeland Tartar. Wrong in the last game, but as Meatloaf once said, two out of three ain't bad. 57. Game to the class, 16. 17. Finds double eight with the second dart in hand. And he levels this set. Went uh, two or three visits in that last leg without a treble there, Dennis Nelson, but kicks off with a, a 140. One first maximum. Yeah, Harrell goes one better going with the first maximum of the match. One hundred. And every time we see a maximum with the first three darts in a leg, we all get a bit excited, don't we? Peter Major nearly had the roof off this place earlier this afternoon. 60. Missing double 12 for a nine darter. Well, I'm no expert lip reader, but I think the last word that came out of James's mouth was bad. Yeah. <laughs> 44. Yes. A bit, a bit of, you know, berating himself, trying to G himself up. It's been a, you know, won the last leg, but, you know, he's keen to, you know, he wants to wrap this up as quickly as possible and assure his progress to the next round. But you know, Dennis isn't going to be going away, so he knows that, you know, visits like that, 44, can't be too many of them especially if this match starts to go into deeper waters. <laughs> 60. Then we should require 141. Like the use of the bullseye. Then we should require 160. Would be the biggest finish of the week if he's able to hit it. One hundred. Does look really focused tonight, just James. He's, he's he's taking his time. He's deliberately not rushing. Dennis wants double 18, and he finds it in the corner. There's a little shoulder pump as well. You know, every leg he wins, he's going to be accompanied by a little snigger from me, <laughs> just because of the way he's celebrating. It's, 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 it's weird, it's understated, yet menacing. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's because he's only just started doing it. He's not entirely comfortable with it. So it's sort of a, I don't really know what to do. He's sort of, you know, when you go to your first school disco, you don't want to make a fool of yourself, mm. but you want to get involved. But, you know, you mentioned the end of that 100. leg about James being quite considered. 
It was something I noticed at the, the World Cup in Denmark. I saw a lot of the England team's games, watched a lot of James's games. And he did seem noticeably more deliberate, I would say, and more methodical than I'd seen him in the past. And I, I didn't know if that was kind of part of being in the World Cup environment. Of course, I saw a lot of him in team games where you're on for one leg. So, you know, 100. you've got to try and be a bit more precise, work with a little bit more than just, you know, what's on the board in those legs. I don't want to say mind games, but you know, there's a bit more to it in those very heated na- team games. But I didn't know if that was something he deliberately tried to work on this year. But uh, yeah, we are seeing in this game as well, certainly at a slower pace from the Hillbilly than probably accustomed to on the big stage. Yeah, I don't know if the seed positions play any part in terms of the expectations of these guys, but James Hurrell arrives here as the number four seed, so logically he'll think, well, should be making at least a semi-final. Once again, I like the use of the bullseye. Makes sense as well with, you know, Mr. Nielsen having the Go Darts Pro sticker on his... The right side of his chest. Obviously, someone who likes doing the, you know, those practice games that put a test to your math skills and your combination finishes. So seems to be benefiting him so far. And he'll, he's got three darts here to try and take out 71 for the first set. 18 will leave tops. 51. It's a chance gone. Game to require 41. Misses the big one, so he's now got 23 left. Seven double eight would be the way I would go. James Hurrell disagrees. He's more of a three double ten man. 31. And double ten, Dennis he's not kind to it. Will it be kind to Dennis? Yes, it will. Dennis Nilsson takes the first set. Second set, first leg. It's James to throw first. We've got a, a guaranteed Dutch opponent for the winner of this game because Alexander Merckx, the 13th seed, faces Arjen Konterman, who was one of the more impressive performers from round one in his 2 0 victory over the Australian Danny Porter. They are in the same section of the draw as the likes of Wesley Plazier and Reese Colley and James Richardson, the latter of whom secured his passage through with a straight sets win against Hita Machin, who mentioned Nerdy gave us a nine darter. Sixty. Just wanted to update people who were with us a little bit earlier on. We were talking about Andy Barton's, the very impressive top seed, dispatch Sebastian Biowetsky in straight sets. We were talking about his nickname, the Beast from the East, and I was a little bit perplexed as Belgium is firmly ensconced in Western Europe. Well, I've been reliably informed that the nickname, the Beast from the East, is based on the province, as you suspected, of where Andy lives. It's, forgive my attempted Flemish pronunciation here, Erst Vlanderen, which is known as the East Oriental region of Belgium. So that solves that mystery. The future of Johnny Tartar's nickname will be uh, a topic to revisit a little bit later in the week. As yet undecided. <laughs> yes, the ever dangerous TBD. Forty-one. A treble there would have put Dennis firmly in the driver's seat of this leg, but you now fancy James with a big visit here, very much back in command. 
comes low with the first one. He's moving around on the hockey a lot so far. One hundred. <laughs> so is Dennis. Line dancing from the pair. One hundred and forty. Games require one hundred and thirty-four. Tries to go tops, tops. One hundred and fourteen. Finds one of them. So it was just tops. <laughs> tops and a single, but might be in vain. Dennis goes ball first. Three, which will leave double four. He's had a couple of misses on this one already. And this is again there. I wouldn't like to be a dartboard if Dennis Nilsson is feeling frustrated. Give it the old Colin Lloyd treatment. That was way off. Yeah, very high and not so handsome from Hurrell there. Better marker the second time. Ten. But he comes inside, so Dennis perhaps surprisingly will get three more chances at this elusive double four. But when the camera literally has to zoom out, you know, it's not a good dart. That's a good dart, though. And Dennis Nilsson gets another leg on the board and a break of throw. This is playing very well so far. Former professional strongman. I have to admit, I'm a bit of a sports nerd. I watch a lot of things. Strongman is one of my big loves, so... Uh, yes, Dennis and I had a long chat at the World Cup about strongman, the history of Swedish strongman, some of their greats over the years. And of course, annual tradition, World Strongest Man will be on the television around Christmas time. 43. And to be honest, I'm Christmas out by that point, so that'll be happy viewing for me. That and a bit of darts, what more can a man ask for? All on series link. Yeah. <laughs> 40. Dennis's fellow Scandinavian, referee Christian Sorensen, having to do a little bit of retrieval duty there. One hundred. One hundred and forty. James is in danger of being cut adrift slightly. 125. <laughs> 100. So far, this performance from Dennis much more akin from what we're used to seeing from the Swedes. You know, I think kind of average-wise, he's someone you'd normally expect to be in the mid-80s range. I think he's sort of not far off that 60. through these first five legs James of this match. James not really got going, and there's quite obvious signs of frustration every time there's a loose dart. Another treble 18 would leave double 16. 96. Opts to see him leave himself. 26, which is slightly curious. I wonder if he will look to split that when he comes back. Well, all I can say is he's hit double four twice, so you must think that next door presents him with a decent chance. Game's on the second leg. It did. What do I know? Go straight for it, Dennis. Dennis knows best. Yeah, that's not a man I'd try and give too much advice to. <laughs> No, I had it, you know, exchanged emails earlier today with the uh, president of the Swedish Federation. She's very proud of how her contingent have done at these championships. Obviously, the way Dennis has started could be more good tidings for the Swedes this year's World Championships. 100! Yeah, it's a strongly backed nation in the world of darts. 
Edwin Torbjornsen is to come, as you mentioned, Andrew, against Jella Klaassen. And the way he played in his first round match against Laszlo Kadar, Jella's got a match on his hands. Yeah, he, he beat the experience remaining in double quick time. It was very impressive to see the, the man I think he's nicknamed Hercules. Although he did have the big ET on the back of his shirt, so maybe he's a man of many names. 24. A ropey visit there from Dennis. But not a ton of pressure there from James. One good dart, but a couple of loose ones either side. I think if he goes into this break 2-0 down, which at the moment looks the most likely outcome, I think he might probably be having a fairly stern word with himself. Maybe a trip to the little boy's room. Splash a bit of water in his face. Sort himself out because... He's not been quite at his free-flowing best so far. Would have been a lovely 1-3-5 finish, but can't find the treble. He's threatened the big combinations, the 1-3-5 and the 1-4-2. Dennis nowhere near as threatening. On that visit, I mean, in general, he probably is. Double ten. Once again, wide of the mark. Then he's going to require 101. James Hurrell has already missed nine darts at a double. He's going to get another chance. But he is costing himself. James will require 20. And all that was, was just a hold of throw. Yet it looked laboured. It was a fight, and to be honest, he's finding a, a fight to say in this game. Dennis has been... 100! Not completely clinical, but certainly more clinical than his English opponent, and a very measured, composed performance from the Swede so far, which I think he'll be happy with. Of course, he got the win on Saturday, but it was a... A curious game, a niggly game, not one that I'm sure either player will look back on particularly fondly. 100! Well, Jordan Brooks must dread the thought of coming to Lakeside with the, the way he's played in the past two years. It's not been a great venue for him. Six. No, and I, I think a note on Jordan, he's a, he's a, you know, he's a lovely lad and he's a fantastic player as well and I don't think he's really you know, shown what he can do on this stage. But I don't think people should take that as a reflection of his of his abilities. 123. He mentioned earlier James Hurrell won the 2022 Scottish Open to qualify here. It was only a silver event in 2023, but the champion there was Jordan Brooks. He beat Martin Atkins, Brackets Wigan, in the final of Six. that tournament. And Jordan was, to be honest, he played some of the best starts of his entire career in Dennis's home nation of Sweden back in August at the Swedish Open. A string of mid-90s averages before he ran into an absolutely mesmeric performance in the semi-finals from Darren Johnson. Dynamite DJ will be in action later in the week. Uh, but, yeah, Jordan played some fantastic darts there. More than deserved his spot here. But, you know, we've seen that big stage. It can have a, it can have a negative effect on people and it's not quite worked for him so far, but... He's in a strong position to qualify for next year's World Championships, and I have no doubt that when he qualifies again, the only way will be up for him, and, you know, Twixie will, will see much more from the Sheriff next time round. Strong response from Hurrell. Well, Dennis halves the score, but that's a denied maximum. It looked like it was... Maybe if it just went a millimetre left or right, it would have gone into the 
the treble it hit the fly bounced on the floor and that treble one ultimately spells the end of his hopes of taking out 98 he's Shanghai he's got the first part got the second can he find what would be a heartbreaking tops 80. I think that's three bounce outs in this set for the Swede. And is he going to be punished here? Nilsson was unfortunate. But Hurrell doesn't punish. Then he should acquire 40. Three at tops for the set. Comes inside, so double 10. Thirty. Chases it round the board to Getting no avail. To so James, perhaps surprisingly, he'll get three more at double eight. James Hurrell in command of this set now. He was looking so good for Dennis Nilsson. But it was a strong third leg for Hurrell on his own throw. Now he's found the break. Dennis missing four darts for the set. He should be off stage right now, just having a five-minute stretch and relax. Yet he's going to be put under the pump here. 140. And you're starting to hear the, the number of people here in the house to watch James Hurrell making a lot of noise. But Dennis making some noise of his own on the board. 140. Trade 140s at the start of this very, very crucial leg for the dynamic of this match. And trading blows now. But Dennis has relented. This second set has slipped away from Dennis. Earl has time. He's got 52 left. Do you see this? Maybe too little, too late. Should be a good marker. It is a good marker. We have got a level game going into the break to win the second set. And Dennis Nilsson might still be thinking, Andrew, about those four missed darts to win that second set, to go 2 0 up, and to establish a massive cushion. Yeah, he looked a little bit lost, to be honest, at the end of that set. You know, the players have the opportunity of going off the stage. You know, I said James should go to the little boy's room, splash a bit of water in his face and regroup. Or you can stay on the stage. We've seen other players do that today. Gary Stone did it earlier to great avail in the afternoon session. I think it was Barry Copeland that did it in our first game of the evening. Dennis looked like he was going to stay on the stage, then looked like he was going to go to the back, then seemed to change his mind, and eventually slowly ambled back to the players' room and ended up actually being the second one out. James was out a minute or so before him, had a good few darts on the board, and so far it seems to be paying off with a 1-2-5 and a, a ton, but, yeah, Dennis will want to get, you know, 
find himself with some set success on the outer ring sooner rather than later because Hurrell can put a run together. Suddenly Dennis will find himself the one needing a big comeback to stay in this one. I think one thing's for certain, the player who wins it will know they have been in a match. There'll probably be fatigue in their arms, in the bodies, because I, I'm like you, I can see this one going all the way. Yeah, and it's not going to not going to get not going to be an easy assignment for either man in the next round either. So. I mean, no game in this tournament is easy. Everyone's here on merit, but, you know, this is going to be a, a grueler, a, a real battle. So, yeah. But that can also be a benefit to players. If you know you've been in a tough one, you know you can prove to yourself, well, I won a tough one, so if I've got to go deep and dig deep, go to the well again, I can do. Uh, hopefully... Both of these players will be hoping that it doesn't go all the way to a last leg decider, as we saw Mr. Thomas and Mr. Copeland do earlier on, because it's tough for them and it's even tougher for their friends and family in the crowd watching on. Dennis Nilsson may have had a break, but he still brought that exasperated look to his face upon missing a double. Doesn't like that, James. No. Because 13 and bull is the most likely route. And he, and he makes to sure that's a safe 13 as well. 49. Uh, here's a little bit southeast on that bull attempt. So Dennis will come back, but. I was going to say the double still not proving his friend, but he finds that one second time of asking, stops the rot at three legs, and holds his throw to kick off this third set of a possible five. Well, every leg he's won has been on that right side of the board. A couple at double ten, a couple at double four, one at double eighteen, and one at double thirteen. So maybe that'll get in his mind as well. He'll think he's got to try and leave those doubles as often as possible, maybe pick and choose rather than play naturally. Good find with that last start from James. Kick off the leg with back-to-back -to -back tons. And Dennis, second visit in a row, veers into the, the fat one to start the leg. And it's not really... Well, good find from him as well, but he's not really settled into his stride. James is missing the 20. It is tending to drift left and go into the five. And Dennis is more towards the right-hand side, that, that one. He's hit it three out of three times so far. That perhaps is telling. We've seen both players shuffling about on the hockey quite a lot so far. Perhaps they're not quite finding their sights. 125. Some good stuff there. Third visit of a ton or more in this leg from James. Leaves him on 132 after 12. Dennis a long way back. 296 with one left. 100. Here's require 132. 60. Dennis's uh, retrieval of his darts from the board and walking back to the back of the stage is quite slow and quite deliberate in this game. Almost Scott Mitchell-esque in his sort of approach to that. And, you know, Scott's watching on, cheering on his friend, England teammate, fellow England captain in James Hurrell. Who 
takes out 72 to level the store. I think I heard something. <laughs> Sounded like the roar of a hillbilly. Yeah, a few cries of go on, Jammer, as he's often known to his friends and family, his England teammates. Yeah, I mean, it's, it could be a repeat of his partner Suzanne's performance on Sunday. That was a right old battle she had with Victoria Monaghan, showed some real fighting instincts in that one. And James, so far, it's not been the prettiest of games, but he's finding enough to stay with his Swedish opponent. And at the moment, that's enough to keep him in contention. Sometimes that release of energy after winning a, a big leg like that, James Hurrell made it known how happy he was. Maybe just leads to a bit of a dip in concentration. Dennis seems to be back on form, judging by this leg. going to go 11 double 10 and continue with the theme well that has been the predominant side of the board as you pointed out you got Absolutely three double not. 40 three. I think he thought a change is as good as a rest but it wasn't there but James back on 223 all he can do really is try and apply some pressure with the Nilsson darts, they do kick over a bit to the right. That's not very helpful, that second one. No score. Once again, he is costing himself. And from a leg he very much wasn't in, this one, two, three would be absolutely massive for the hillbilly. Should get at least a go at the ball. Which he does. He said six goes at it now. It's not been his friend. Eight darts later, and Dennis Nilsson still has not won this leg. It was going swimmingly, scoring visits of 140, 140 and 130. But he's come up dry. He looks furious. He'll now feel relieved. And I do wonder if he might try and split this with the first start. 14 and 7 haven't been kind to him so far. No, he went straight at it. And with very, very good effect. Such a strange game, this. One of the most difficult doubles to hit on a dartboard because it's low on the board and it's riddled with risk. If you go inside, you've then got a split and then it's another small double. Yeah, now both of the times that I've said, oh, he, he might go and split on this one to make it a little bit easier. He's gone and hit double seven and double 13 first time. So perhaps I'm a good luck charm. 
Or maybe I just won't say anything anymore. I clearly don't know what I'm talking about. 100. I heartily disagree. James Hurrell knows what he's doing with the treble twenties. Three of them equals a max. His second of the game. Dennis bites back. And this is the point of the game where us commentators, by the rules, are meant to slip into cliches and start talking about London buses. <laughs> Let's not. Yeah, I'm not sure a Yorkshireman's got a lot to contribute yeah, on the London bus it. conversation. There's <laughs> no such thing as two quick buses up in Waking. <laughs> 140! James will apply 41. For an 11 dart leg. I repeat, for an 11 dart leg. Double 18. Brilliant. It is absolutely superb from Dennis Nilsson. It is the best leg of the match. It wins Dennis Nilsson set three. And it swings the pendulum in his direction. Game on. Both players starting to fire in the scoring phase. Particularly James Hurrell. 81. So you can find quite a few two treble visits. It's been a real topsy-turvy game. Both men have had chances in pretty much every leg. We could really have had 59. any conceivable score by this point, but it's, it's the Swede that's in front, although it's the Englishman that's made a far better start to this leg. The full set is with his throw. 100. from Dennis Nilsson is swiftly followed by a 13 data from James Hurrell. We've talked about the number of Swedish players in this year's tournament, three in the men's and one in the ladies. Uh, you know, the players in the, the Northern Europe region of the, the WDF, the Scandinavian wow. countries, and the Baltics, Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia, they're all really good at supporting each other's tournaments. They all see the value in the regional table in this WDF system, knowing that the two best men and that the best women in that region will get into oh, the World yeah. Championships. And... You see that from where Dennis has picked up his ranking points, you know, got to finals in Lithuania last year. I know he actually 
lost, at, it might have been this year, Lithuania, he lost in the final to John Scott, who will be in action tomorrow. Uh, but he's travelled to Danish Open. He's gone to Estonia, he's gone to the Faroe Islands in the past, as have the likes of Ricky Nauman been to Estonia. So they, they do value and appreciate the tournaments in their region, and they chase those to be here, and it's a really good standard up there. You see that with the PDC Nordic and Baltic as well. Um, and it's a, a real good reflection, I think, on the WDF system that we've had such a strong representation from Northern Europe, this time with Dennis, Ricky, and Mr. Torbjornsson. Yeah, it's another region in the world where darts is quickly growing. And you've got a, a big carrot to dangle in front of them, a place at Lakeside, or a couple of places at Lakeside. Just gives the players who play in those events that extra bit of motivation. Advantage Dennis on his own throw. One hundred. Dennis requires sixty-four. He's going to get one da uh, double. Doesn't find the trouble with the first. Two sixteens for the double. Game set the second day. Dennis moves on. Third day extends to throw first. Game on. Absolutely clinical. And the Swede is now just two legs away from a spot in the last 16 where he would play either Alexander Merckx or the rapid Dutchman. Oh, and they're both rapid Dutchmen, but Ian Konterman, who was so impressive on Saturday evening. But Alexander, he's a player to watch. Multiple-time title winner on the WF circuit. He's made real strides and inroads on the Challenge Tour this year. And I think he's someone who well worth keeping an eye on when he makes his lakeside bow a little bit later in the week. 100! And there's another game to look forward to. And it kicks things off tomorrow. Alexander Merckx playing Ian Contiment. 140! <coughs> James Hurrell really cannot afford to be broken here. One hundred. But it's been another good scoring leg from Dennis. Both players ramped up in that department in the last few minutes or so. Well, pretty much since the break, but James has got to make a real dent in this 2-1-8 because... Dennis could well take out that 1-2-1. One, one. Wants to utilise the 18s to give himself a Shanghai shot. Treble 17. We'll go back to treble 20. He's made a hash of it. Tops. 100. How big could that be? When we look back at the end of this game, that's not helpful. He can't adjust. 27. James required 20. Four disastrous darts there for Dennis Nilsson. None of them quite what he wanted. Have opened the door for James Hurrell. That should be a good marker for double ten. Bends the wire with the second attempt. And repeats the feat with the third. As Christian Torrenson says, no score. Dennis, three darts at this 56 combination. And only get one at the double, though. And that double will be tops. Dennis Nilsson can't find it either. 
Double trouble for Hurrell and Nilsson. This time he gets it, first time of asking. I mean, the good thing for James Hurrell in this position, if he holds his throw, he wins the set, the slate's wiped clean, and then it's best of five. Yeah, I mean, there's not been a terrible amount to split either of these men throughout this game. I know James is fractionally ahead in the averages. 83 or so compared to 81 for Dennis Nielsen. But, yeah, I mean, if you go down to a deciding set, the way this game has gone, the way both men's finishing has gone, I think it could be anyone's. Very literally could be anyone's. I don't like to call it. And I'm sure you won't either. Nope. I avoid predictions at all costs. Dennis Nilsson all wished he avoided 22 at all costs because even now if he hits perfection, won't leave a finish. Horrible number in darts, 339. Does find a treble there, Dennis Nelson, but still not on a finish. So James could put himself in a very good position here. That one stoops quite low. So does that one. 58. Could and should have been much better. That's okay. That's perfect. It's so inviting. But the invitation is rejected. 100. Then we should require 80. My Swedish isn't quite what it could be, but Dennis didn't seem particularly pleased with himself with that attempt at tops. Tops for 2-2. Two, two. The groans from the crowd say it all. Double 10. Inside for Nielsen. So Hurrell's got three more darts to take this fourth set and send us to our second, fifth set of the evening. Notice there's a, a sort of Rafael Nadal-esque routine here from Hurrell on these key doubles, touching the top of his flights. Hand in his pocket, comes inside on the tens. not happening for him. It's the first time I've ever heard Rafael Nadal and James Hurrell compared before. Oh, Dennis. Dennis, Dennis. At the very least, you've got to keep it straight. It's a lifeline for James Hurrell. It's a lifeline that he takes advantage of. We are going to a fifth set. It is a fist bump that Dennis Nilsson didn't want to give. Fifty-nine. 
Massey. Lakeside has seemingly dropped silent. And even the crowd appreciate the tension that's being served up. He gave that a real snarl before throwing. Yeah, took a little extra moment to compose himself and absolutely was worth it. Third 180 of the game from Hurrell. Not going to finish just yet, but bodes well for this visit. Once again, sensible use of the board, leaves a two data. It might not matter. 72. Dennis Nilsson denied. It would have been a first ton plus finish of the game. It's going to get two at tops here. Second one comes very low, and James seems to almost grab for his elbow as if to say, What happened there? Getting warmer. But the door stays firmly closed for Dennis Nielsen. to say James Hurrell with a potentially decisive blow it is the first time he has led the game and you think he absolutely knew that with the roar he let out big fist pump for the crowd big roar he's an emotive player at the best of times James but that one meant a lot and again that Nadal-esque little routine before he throws. It's, it's bizarre. I don't know whether that's something he's developed, something he's picked up through coaching. It seems to be, well, seems to be helping him somehow in this game. There's been a lot of tense, tight moments. And the last couple, he's had the better of them, taking that four set. And capitalising on those missed doubles from Nielsen in that leg. And for those who aren't big tennis viewers, I'm not actually one myself, but I do remember watching something years ago when they were talking about Rafael Nadal and how much of a, a routine-based individual he was. And they'd studied hours of footage of him playing, and it basically was... Every time he was set to receive on his opponent's serve, he went through the exact same routine every time before every point. He sort of tucked his hair behind his left ear, tucked his hair behind his right Sixth ear, eight. adjusted his shorts, moved his left foot, moved his right foot, and then started to sway. Exact same routine every time. And he also had the exact same routine for stacking his water bottles at the side of his chair and famously got rather aggravated when the Australian Nick Kyrgios punted his water bottles over to wind him up um, and James's routine of tapping the top of each flight, adjusting his shirt, sticking his hand in his pocket seems to be that sort of routine here Well, quite a few darts players, I mean they are creatures of habit because it is a sport that relies on rhythm, you look at Michael Van Gerwen pulling up the socks the likes of Gary Anderson who Gives the hockey a bit of a kick. Rob Cross does the same. Dimitri Vandenberg does the, the flight tap. Anything that just reminds them 
of rhythm and sameness. Maybe just focuses the mind a bit more. Dennis Nilsson is beginning to lose focus though. Uh, fractionally ahead in this leg, but probably should have been a lot more. And the look on his face tells you he knows that as well. Unfortunate deflection into the five leaves him a very tricky one three five. It's a shot where the bullseye will have to come into play. Might do the same if Hurrell is allowed to come back. Travel 20. He's going for the ball as well. We're hoping for a treble, which he gets. Double eight. And James Hurrell is 501 points away from the last 16. Dennis Nilsson looks unmoved, but inside he'll be raging. Hurrell does get the winner. He's going to be like a stick of dynamite on stage. Exactly. He gave it the big fist pump when he levelled it up at 2-2. And that time, he seemed to be having a little word with the board after he'd finished as well. Seemed to be telling it who was in charge in this one. And it's very much James Hurrell in charge of this match now as well. 59. How crucial those missed doubles will prove to be for Dennis Nielsen at 2-1 down in the last set. Could have leveled it up, totally different dynamic. And now he's dropped a number of legs on the bounce. And he's staring down the barrel of a potential defeat, despite leading 1-0 and 2-1. 83. Almost neck and neck. The well is running dry. from James because he knows that Dennis has got six starts at this 160 to keep the match alive. 100. It's adequate. Should get two darts at tops. He is not giving up without a fight. That was just a hold a throw. The hard job here now is for Dennis Nielsen. The difficult part 
He's got to break the hurl throw. That will feel like more than 81. Rescued with dart three. 140. Crowd are behind one man. Forty-four. Now we're now seeing the nerves creeping into Hurrell's game. The finish line in sight. Is he starting to sputter? Well, to say the two averages are in the low 80s, this has been gripping. The way that the game has ebbed and flowed. I don't think Bleep. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think it takes a degree in lip reading to understand that the England captain was not amused by a second successive trebleless visit in this leg. It's a big trouble there for Dennis Nielsen. It's down on the 1-2-1. One, one. We've seen it taken out already today. Gary Stone took out a 1-2-1. One, one. Barry Copeland took out a 1-2-1. One, one. Can Dennis Nielsen do the same? He might just have to. He might just have to. Triple 17. Push the button, Dennis. We are going all the way. A bottle of the highest order. And the biggest roar of the night there from Dennis Nielsen. He knew that was big. Fifth and final leg. And I said that was the hard bit, breaking the hurl throw. Well, he's done that. And now can a man whose background was lifting heavy weights, propping up the big Atlas stones. Has he got it to take the weight and pressure of this deciding leg? The 180 will feel like a total waste. 100. Strong start. Been enthralling stuff all the way through both men. Missed chances, momentum ebbing and flowing, and I'm quite literally now on the edge of my seat. 100. amazing how they can find those sorts of visits when they are truly under pressure got to start on the 19s not going to leave a finish now So Dennis has got six starts from 166.
We saw him do 160 in five a couple of legs ago. 41. 41 is not a tremendous help though. do it the chance goes to end an enthralling game with what would be its biggest checkout yet wrong side of the wire Seventy seven left. Eighty-two. Could all be academic. Then he should require seventy-two. Nineteen or treble. Bullseye. Dennis Nilsson has missed a match start. James Hurrell should get two. James will require 58. Double ten. Both players have had chances to book their place in round three. And Dennis Nilsson is the strongest man on the stage in an absolutely epic encounter.